Congressman Michael Turner, welcome to the subcommittee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Ranking Member Price. Uh, Mr. Chairman Andrews, I want to thank you for your comments concerning uh, this is being an issue of trust and values. And uh, Ranking Member Price, I want to thank you for your comments concerning um, questions of the actions of this administration that facilitated this result. Uh, the bankruptcy of Delphi Corporation has had a major impact on my community of Dayton, Ohio. Uh, the Dayton region is actually the birthplace of, of Delphi. The company was founded as the Dayton Engineering Laboratories Company, which evolved through the hard work of Ohioans into Delco, a division of General Motors. General Motors subsequently spun off Delphi, which at one point was the largest parts supplier of General Motors. Mr. Chairman, my father worked in General Motors factories for over 40 years. When Delphi declared bankruptcy in 2005, the company decided to close or sell several facilities in my congressional district, including two facilities in Dayton, as well as a facility in Kettering, Moraine, and Vandalia. The job loss at these facilities has been estimated as o at over 5,000 jobs. The effect of these plant closures have been felt throughout the Dayton region as many of our family members, neighbors, and friends were Delphi employees. The closure of these facilities also has an impact beyond individual job loss. Whole neighborhoods have been affected by Delphi's bankruptcy through increased foreclosures and community services that have been affected as a result of an eroded tax base. The job loss associated with Delphi's bankruptcy was further increased by the closing of a General Motors plant in Moraine, Ohio, which resulted in the loss of 5,000 additional jobs. The jobs also losses also extended to small manufacturers and suppliers throughout Ohio who lost Delphi and General Motors as clients. Since Delphi entered bankruptcy in 2005, many of us in Ohio have worked on a bipartisan basis to assist those affected in the state. I've worked with my colleague, Senator Brown, to help secure emergency assistance for auto workers and with Representative Tim Ryan to help provide trade adjustment assistance to dislocated workers. Today's hearing is response to yet another loss to my community at the hands of Delphi Corporation. This summer, Delphi, when they petitioned for the United States Supreme Court's approval to turn over pensions for salaried retirees to the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, resulted in additional loss to my constituents. These actions are resulting in approximately 15,000 salaried Delphi retirees from across the country taking a severe cut in their promised pension benefits. And, you know, I want to go a little further. We keep talking about promises. <laughs> Actually, these are, these are earned pension benefits, uh, benefits that, as a result of their hard work, should have been there for them upon their retirement. By some estimates, this means a 70 percent reduction in pensions, and for some retirees, the news compounds the prior loss of health care benefits. Earlier this year, a bipartisan group of Ohio representatives petitioned the administration to help retirees from General Motors plants in Dayton and Warren to receive insurance benefits. While these retirees were not entirely made whole, some were able to receive a baseline of benefit protections. However, not all groups have had these results. Delphi salaried retirees, as well as some of the so-called splinter unions, such as IUOE, IBEW, and IAM, still face benefit reductions. Local leadership for the Delphi salaried retirees in my district estimate that nearly 1,000 retirees in the Dayton area will be affected by the bankruptcy court's decision. This treatment of salaried retirees is particularly troublesome in comparison to the benefits received by some in organized labor organizations. I have worked along with the members of this panel to advocate on behalf of both union and non-union labor to ensure that all retired workers receive whatever benefits they were promised. Mr. Chairman, all of these retirees, regardless of labor affiliation or not, worked alongside each other during their careers. They should not be treated differently in retirement. Salaried retirees made their careers by supporting Delphi Corporation. Congress and President Obama's administration owe it to these hardworking men and women to pursue aggressive oversight in this matter and to work toward a solution. Before I conclude, I would like to recognize Tom Rose, who drove here from Dayton, Ohio, to Washington, D.C. for today's hearing, as well as the other retirees who are present, all of which, Mr. Chairman, are attending this hearing in hopes of answers as to how this issue can be addressed. Uh, they have my continued commitment to work with this panel on, on their behalf. Mr. Chairman, while Delphi has been permitted to survive, their retirees continue to struggle. This problem should not have been allowed to occur, to occur, and the administration's actions appear to have encouraged this result. And this outcome only encourages companies in the future to underfund their pensions and then to walk away from their obligations. I appreciate your holding this hearing today, and we look forward to additional answers. Thank you.